We have a, a, a privilege to have Audrey Schaefer here. Uh, Audrey is currently the Space Policy Advisor in the Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Policy, where she develops policy for the U.S. Department of Defense and coordinates space policy activities with other U.S. government agencies. For the past several years, her focus has been on establishing international norms of behavior for responsible peacetime space operation. She plays a very active role in the, co uh, the U.S. COPIUS uh, delegation for the you know, peaceful use of outer space uh, and has been an expert to the, US, uh, the U.N. group of government experts on space transportation and confidence uh, building measures. Um, more so, uh, I, hopefully, if there's a, a little bit of downtime, uh, um, Audrey just got back from a two-week safari in Africa. So if, if we have any downtime or offline time, I'd, I'd certainly love to hear about, about the trip. And, and how much different a safari is from working in uh, the Department of Defense Pentagon. and the Pentagon. So I'm sure there's a lot of correlation there. So without further ado, Audrey, the panel's yours. Thank you, Eric. And thank you for that really kind introduction, which frankly is just a very nice way of saying that I work for Doug Levero. <laughs> um, so first, let me welcome you all back from lunch. Aloha. Aloha. Um, so in this session, we're really actually continuing the panel that we had just before lunch um, on international SSA and collaboration, um, where we're going to continue to discuss current efforts and priorities in SSA and SSA collaboration with a particular focus on the Asia Pacific and European regions. Since we did just have an outstanding panel where um, Mark Vidmar gave some excellent um, introductory marks, I don't really want to spend too much time sort of setting the stage because I think um, we've by and large already done that. Um, I did just want to echo what he said and what several of our speakers have said already, which is the real importance of international collaboration for space situational awareness. Um, no one nation has the resources, the capabilities, or the geography, frankly, to track every single space object precisely. And so, of course, international cooperation on SSA is essential. Um, in the U.S., our national space policy recognizes that and directs us to cooperate with foreign partners, private sector, and other inter and intergovernmental organizations. So that's enough for me. And I'm going to essentially introduce um, each of our panelists. I'll give you a very brief um, introduction to their background and uh, kind of a summary of what each of them is going to say. Then I'm going to turn it over to each of them for some brief remarks. And hopefully, we'll save time for a robust Q&A session at the end. Um, so first, to my immediate left, uh, Mr. Susumi Yoshimori, Yoshitomi, excuse me. Um, he is the executive director of the Japan Space Forum, in which capacity he's responsible for the operations of dedicated space debris observation facilities, such as the S-band phase array radar and one meter telescope di uh, in Japan. He's also the symposium director of the International Symposium on Sustainable Space Development and Utilization for Humankind, which I believe he will be discussing later in the AMOS conference. He is going to give us uh, some of his personal thoughts on current developments in Japanese SSA as well as U.S.-Japan SSA cooperation. Uh, to his left, Lieutenant Colonel Tom Blata. Close enough, yep. who serves as the Director of Operations of the German Space Situational Awareness Center. Um, the center is actually co-located with one of NATO's combined air operations centers and the German National Air Defense Center uh, at the UDEM Air Defense Installation in Western Germany. And finally, at the very end of the table, uh, Colonel Frank Schottenlohr, who is currently the Chief of the Space Environment Mastery Office at the French Joint Space Command in Paris. In that capacity, he handles activities relevant to space situational awareness, including collision avoidance and space debris issues, and the vulnerability and security of space assets. Oh, and he's going to discuss challenges and opportunities for SSA cooperation. And I failed to mention that Lieutenant Colonel Blatte is going to give us some remarks on German SSA activities. So if I may first turn it over to Mr. Yoshitomi. And yes. please. OK, thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Audrey. So, uh, I'm, uh, I'm participating in this uh, panel discussion for the second time. So, last year uh, I was here, and so uh, this spring, Jeannie and I visited the, the Office of the National Space Policy to join this uh, conference, and also the, uh, we 
I contacted with the uh, Minister of Defense, uh, but unfortunately, they, uh, uh, they, they cannot come to uh, this symposium due to the, some uh, uh, business or some uh, uh, due to the uh, budgetary problem. So uh, this year, so I'm alone, so from the uh, Japan, but uh, uh, I'm not a representative from the government of Japan, so uh, I'll say uh, just a uh, uh, personal opinion or some uh, 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 idea from the, as a member of the uh, Japan Space Forum. As you may know, the, uh, uh, based on the uh, US-Japan cooperative initiative announced on April 30th uh, and 2012, so both countries are aiming at uh, strengthening and expanding the uh, relationship in the area of, of uh, space security cooperation. Then, so Japan has uh, started to study the future SSA system, such as a national SSA center in Japan. So actually, the uh, SSA activity conducted by only the uh, JAXA in Japan. So uh, we have to uh, establish a new system in Japan for the uh, SSA activities. So uh, right now, uh, so we have uh, some, uh, we have a contract from the, uh, the Office of National Space Policy to uh, recommend the future SSA system in Japan. So I'd like to introduce uh, such kind of the activity in, in this uh, panel. Thank you. Thank you, very, <clears throat> thank you very much. Tom? <clears throat> Thank you, Audrey, uh, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to participate in this uh, panel discussion. A lot has already been said about uh, the importance of space situational awareness by previous speakers, but uh, just not by me yet. Above that, when it comes to collaboration in the subject area, highlighting to this panel and audience that uh, cooperative efforts are much more feasible, if not the only practical way of ensuring the safety of our space-based infrastructure is like preaching to the choir. So let me therefore go straight to the point and mention some of the national uh, German efforts in this realm. I hope that didn't sound too German. Space-based services uh, perform an increasingly important function with respect to civil and military security in Germany and Europe. SSA is therefore driven by civil and military, or shall I say, economic and defense requirements. The results are dual purpose with one common goal, protection of critical space-based infrastructure. Germany has set up the German Space Situational Awareness Center as a joint effort between the Federal Ministry of Defense and the Federal Ministry of Economy and uh, Technology, thus demonstrating a high level of integration of military and civil requirements from the get-go. Space engineers from DLR Space Administration are an integral part of the GSEC, both in leadership as well as analytical capacity. We started off with three military personnel in 2009, relying 100% on conventional off-the-shelf software. Last year, we were comprised of 12 military and three civilians. As of this month, 22 military and four civilian experts comprise the GSEC, and we will reach our planned strength of 43 plus 10 within the set timelines. Today, already about a third of the software tools used at the GSEC are own developments. 75% of the military personnel hold university degrees, predominantly in aerospace engineering and computer science. At the University of the Armed Forces in Munich, uh, the first master degree graduates in mathematical engineering, which combines math of aerospace engineering, mechanical engineering, and computer science master programs, received their diplomas as we speak and will join the GSEC later this month. We also cooperate closely with national universities and research organizations like the Technical University of Braunschweig, the Fraunhofer Institute for High Frequency Physics and Radar Techniques, as well as Fraunhofer and Mark Institute for High Speed Dynamics, to name just a few. Our Air Chief just released the Air Force's midterm financial plan covering 2016 to 2020, in which GSEC is given a distinct position. Complementary to that, the DLR Space Administration is increasing its efforts on the R&D side to support further enhancements in national SSA capabilities. Together, we will ensure that the GSEC reaches full operational capabilities within the planned timelines. Germany sees a responsibility to improve the effectiveness of SSA in Europe through pragmatic steps. The complementary use of existing assets in Germany and France is such a step. 
Together with friends, we strongly support a cooperative approach that leaves sovereignty over capabilities with the contributing states and takes the sensitive nature of SSA data into account. SSA, especially space surveillance and tracking, is challenging in various aspects. This includes, among others, questions of governance, international cooperation, and data security. Currently, the backbone of SSA in Europe, including existing capabilities in Germany and France, are based on bilateral military cooperation with the United States Strategic Command. Above that, space reconnaissance and space object identification are core national security functions that must remain in military control. Germany and France support the idea as a starting point of setting up a consortium that provides SSA services at European level based on linking our existing national capabilities. This consortium, however, will be open to other EU member states with substantial complementary capabilities. Thank you for your attention, and I'm open to your questions later on. Thank you, Tom. And I'll finally turn it over to our last speaker. Yeah, thank you. Sir. On behalf of General Arnaud, Commander of the French Joint Space Command, I'm very pleased and honored to be here at this second annual Amos SSA Policy Forum. I'd like to, to thank the organization team and sponsor for organizing such, uh, such a forum. Uh, in the Air Force in France, we don't have space carrier that you can have in, uh, in the US. Previously, in, uh, before joining the Joint Space Command, I was in charge in the Air Defense and Aeroperation Command from 2001 to 2010 of the GRAV Space Surveillance System French. I know that GRAV is an acronym standing for Grand Réseau Adapté à la Veille Spatiale. I know that is for international cooperation, it is not a good acronym. Uh, please spell it as a Meaning in, in a French grave system and not grave because it's not sounds very good for the future. Uh, I will be here for the all, all the week, so if you have any question uh, arising on, not only for space cooperation or SS aspects in, in France, feel free to come and ask me. I will just ask you to speak slowly because, as you notice, I, American is not my native language, and I, I promise I do my best to answer you, but. I apologize with my typical South French accent. Well, we can say that language is maybe the first difficulty for SSA collaboration, but I will do my best. That's all. Uh, we all know that SSA is important. We are, you know, see plenty of specialists here, and many things are, have been said this morning. Uh, for me, I would say two other things that SSA is not only important. For me, it is mandatory for space sustainability and security. So two points to keep in mind that, that have been highlighted this morning. The first one is that the rising interest in application and their vital importance for modern societies, which leads to a significant increase of space traffic. We heard about 60 countries, but not only countries or governmental uh, entities, it's also for commercial and international commercial entities, which gets, I mean, the things are getting really, really worse. The second one is that the space traffic now involves a drastic increase in space debris, which rises up the risk of collisions and makes the good knowledge of the space environmental environment essential. Essential and difficult, of course. And if we consider that space conquest began only 50 years ago, these two points show that the space situation evolves quicker than our ability to cope with it. What about in France? Well, let's say that, to be optimist, SSA is going step by step on the top of the agenda. I wish it could be on the five top ten, or the five top, but it's not really the case. Budget constraints, financial crisis, hamper our willingness to reach our goals. Nevertheless, the French white paper on defense and security, which has been updated last June, still highlights the importance of space assets and their security. That's very important because SSA still highlights into the French white paper. And our priorities are driven for the five next years, which is update the graph system and begin geostationary observation in order to create the first, cat our first catalog. But what about cooperation? We know that in Europe, the European Commission will probably, 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 I guess, finance European SSA services, not facilities, services. So we are cr working closely with our German colleagues for an appropriate answer for these services because our both countries have their own systems. But let's say that we are beginning but the hardest cooperation it can be because it's not only exchanging data, 
exchanging data between German and France are yet existing. Well, thanks to our legion officers, we are doing a great job. But the fact is for, that if we want to make a, a real answer to the European, European problem, we have to create one thing. I mean, create an entity or a structure at an appropriate level to give the services at the European. And this is much more difficult than exchanging data. And about the US, well, with the US it's, let's say, much more simple, but much more slowly. Because since 2008, we have a forum, a space cooperation forum with the US. And it was part of the beginning of the space cooperation forum, and that's very, very fine. We agree on showing the same concern about space data and SSA. And so what? Nothing happened. But let's say that you are doing a great job, and that's very difficult for me. Because from 2008 and nowadays, you made a great job with the GSPOC, sending and disseminating plenty of data and conjunction analysis and so on. And now, how can I explain to my decision maker that I need fundings to, to, to create my own assets? <laughs> Even the space agency says, no, we are okay with the US data. Good. <laughs> that would be difficult. So, last year I told you that the one of the problems of SSI is the balance between sovereignty and cooperation. It's still the case. And we had plenty of work in, in France that year because I added the term of responsibility. Who is responsible of France of what? Even if you know we have a space law, which means that it creates a, a framework for, for commercial entities to, to, to do the space job and, and so on. But there's nothing in it about space surveillance. And there was a, a big deal with the, with the space agency. So began a work group to clarify and define which entities and which organization is really in charge of space surveillance in France. And because of what field to achieve SSR's goals, this simple question was really not obvious. And there's still work to be done until the end of the year, and it will be part of my job, and believe me, I wish I could stay here and not to do that, because discussing with the space agency is sometimes very, very difficult. But why is it difficult? Because besides the responsibilities, is that if you have to do the job, so the ministry has to put the money, the team, and create the facility and all the things to give the service to the government, to the French government, and then to the European, international, and, and so on. Well, definitely, the, the French Space Agency, which belongs part for the Ministry of Research and part of the Ministry of Defense, tried to say, mm, it's mainly the Ministry of Defense and not the Ministry of Research, but that's, this is not fit with the, with the organization. And it's the fact that no one nation, perhaps, except the US, has the resources or geography necessary to track precisely, precisely every space object. That is why we are working with you and Germany for better mutual understanding for the space situation. Not because we want really our own assets. It's why because we are thinking that if we can have another point of view, and you bring your own point of view, and Germany and Japan brings your point of view, mainly, uh, all these things is building much more confident and reliable approach at an international uh, level, and especially with uh, other countries such as China, India, and so on. So one can, think, one can uh, say that things get, go slowly, and even if we have meetings, regular meetings since 2008, we expect only to sign a a document with the U.S. allowing to exchange SSA data between armed forces for the end of this year. I mean, quite a long time. In fact, uh, when we are thinking that SSA is not only uh, space surveillance and tracking, collision avoidance, or atmospheric or space weather and Earth objects, you need to think that uh, for defense and security purposes, we have also to deal with characterization and identification. And that's the line where we begin to enter really into confidential data. And that's why we have to really address specific countries because we need to trust each country before beginning real exchanges of data. 
I think, I still think that we can begin with simple cases at atmospheric wind trials, anomalies analysis. And once these data exchanges will begin, things will go further. So, just a short conclusion for me. In, from my point of view in France, uh, I think that uh, cooperation is not a technical problem. There are technical challenges, size of debris, updating observation, and so on, but exchanges data is not for us a technical problem. We saw that with our German colleagues or, and so on. It's quite easy at this moment because we, we don't have all your stuff of you, so for us it's quite easier to do. But even if we can think that memorandum or arguments slow down the processes, I am still being optimistic. These processes prove that things are still moving. And I prefer small steps than no steps and still being optimist. And I really think that this kind of forum uh, helps the things moving forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, Frank. Touched on some very good issues, which actually have been uh, raised in some of the questions, so, uh, but I will direct them to the other panelists anyway. As just a reminder to everyone, um, we have about 30 more minutes for questions. You can text them in and I will see them come in here. Um, so uh, the first question I'm going to ask our panelists kind of combines two different questions that I received um, into one. And the question is about, so m the panel is actually about sort of collaboration, but the question I think is very interesting is about challenges within your national governments. And um, so there are sort of two different, I've got two different questions, so I'll combine them into one. Um, the first aspect of the question is uh, what sort of interagency challenges might you have within your government uh, relevant to SSA? And the second, uh, which, Frank, you were sort of just talking about, but uh, what might be the challenges to sharing SSA uh, data also within your country? Um, so we'll start out with a nice, easy question. I'll open it up to whoever wants to go first. OK, I'll, I'll start off. Um, interesting question, uh, right to the one of the weak points, of course. Um, yes, in, uh, in Germany, uh, for the last four decades, um, uh, space uh, R&D uh, was completely um, dominated or in the hand, was a civilian uh, subject. And the uh, armed forces um, started to develop requirements rather late. We brought our first systems into space in the late 90s, uh, and that's when slowly the process started. Uh, um, uh, thinking about how to protect those um, systems. And of course, by then, uh, a lot of um, um, ways uh, of uh, dealing with uh, um, data exchange um, between the civilian side uh, had already been fully established, and in all these processes, nowhere was there a military installation um, uh, incorporated. So in the last uh, three and a half years since the CHISEC was stood up, we had to do a lot of networking. But still, uh, there is two uh, basically completely different sides, which is the, uh, the civil side was mainly uh, um, driven by uh, economic means. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, the uh, R&D side, which is funded by our Federal Ministry of Economy, uh, Economy and uh, Technology. And then, of course, there's the military side, uh, which is funded by uh, FMOD funds. And uh, our uh, um, constitution does not allow us to mix those funds, even though now we have this, uh, this uh, two-headed, um, dual-purpose organization uh, uh, like the GSEC. So that's not easy. So we try to um, keep a, uh, a clear distinction in between operational uh, applications, which are funded by the uh, um, FMOD, and the uh, research and development side, which is funded by the uh, um, FMET. And, uh, and that does not really make it easier, because when you uh, think about um, advancing your capabilities, sooner or later, the, the fine line between development, uh, continued development, um, and operational use blurs more and more. Uh, and, uh, but not all of these challenges just have been uh, tackled yet. We don't have yet solutions to all these questions. Uh, I would just uh, add something to my, uh, fully agree with uh, what Jesse said and uh, 
uh, we have this, quite the same problems, and many of if I understand well the question, the main challenge in between intelligence is research versus operational. And even sometimes we don't have the good knowledge between civilian and military of what's mean operational. When we're dealing with the researchers, uh, uh, the guys are always thinking about one question, one answer, and that's fine for them. But when we're dealing to speak, uh, yes, but we need now open operational system 24, 24 hours per day, each day of the week, and, and so on. Well, it's not the same case. And mainly the space agencies deal with spacecrafts and not observation from space for SSA. And taking into account that SSA is not only one question because it is a wide field of view of anything that we, that we have to deal with, space weather, NEO, and, and plenty of things like that. It is not only one research that can give the huge answer. And when you are dealing to say, take step by step what the project should be, it's a kind of jig, super jigsaw, and uh, sometimes there are difficulties to cope with that. So, <clears throat> In terms of the SSA uh, activity uh, in Japan, the uh, situation is uh, changing uh, since uh, uh, last January. The uh, Japanese government uh, set uh, a new space basic plan. So based on this uh, basic plan, the uh, Ministry of Defense is allowed to uh, have uh, some uh, SSA activities. but. Uh, uh, the Office of National Space Policy uh, is uh, responsible for the overall civilian space program, uh, including uh, the JAXAs. And on the other hand, uh, ONSP has uh, authority of defining uh, SSA, uh, SSA, SSA, activ uh, SSA uh, activity in Japan, which means the uh, ONSP and the uh, Ministry of Defense will implement their SSA activities individually based on the definition of by the uh, ONSP. So the, uh, as I said before, the uh, uh, private sector's team composed of the, uh, the society of uh, Japanese uh, aerospace uh, companies and uh, NEC and uh, Mitsubishi Electric and Fujitsu and IHI and uh, our organization, JSF, is now finalizing the uh, uh, study report about the concept of the National SSA Center. And also the uh, uh, Ministry of Defense placed uh, a new contract uh, to the uh, private company's team to uh, get a new concept of the SSA, uh, SSA capability in MOD. So the situation in Japan is a little bit uh, uh, changing now. And uh, uh, as you may know, the, uh, in Japan, there are some, some uh, entities operating the uh, satellites. The JAXA is operating many of the satellites, as you, as you know well. And also the, uh, uh, and the the cabinet office is operating uh, some of the uh, information gathering satellite. It's uh, intelligence uh, uh, purposes. And also the uh, uh, meteorological agency is operating uh, a meteorology uh, satellite on the geo. And also the uh, uh, private sector, such as the Sky Perfect TV, they are operating the 16 uh, commercial telecommunication and broadcasting satellite now. So, but um, only the uh, JAXA is uh, conducting actually the uh, SSA activity and especially the, uh, the cabinet officers who are operating the uh, IGS and also the uh, meteorological satellite, uh, met meteorological agency is operating the satellite. They, they are not uh, doing uh, such a uh, activity uh, in, in Japan. So, so we should share the uh, uh, SSSC uh, knowledge among this uh, uh, satellite operator in Japan. So the, uh, the Office of National Space Policy asked us to make a recommendation uh, uh, to the government by the end of this month. 
Thank you, yeah. Susan. Audrey, coming oh. back to the second part of your question, of because course. I think I skipped that, uh, the question of uh, sharing. Um, in principle, we do not have a problem with sharing uh, data. The devil lies as, uh, so often in the detail. Um, so when there is an international SSA collaboration, there needs to be a uh, solid data policy established. So the owner of assets in space are the ones who own the classification of, for information over that asset. And that needs to be ensured throughout uh, um, all organizations that participate in this uh, collaborative effort to make sure that in the end there is one agreed whitelist of information that can be released uh, on certain objects uh, and uh, on the other hand to make sure that um, information on objects that uh, pertain to uh, uh, national security are not released. Um, but um, I think that is a question of, of data policy and uh, that is not an unsolvable problem. Okay, thank you. So now for the next question, I'm going to take us out of our individual nations and I'm going to look towards regional cooperation. Um, I have a few different questions on this topic, so I'll again combine them into one, especially I think some of our, our European speakers have touched on this a bit already. Um, so the more general question is, can you talk about regional SSA cooperation? And the specifics that I have received is uh, for either Tom or Frank, uh, can you give us an update on the ESA SSA preparatory program? And uh, for Susumu, uh, question about whether you have any, whether Japan has any regional SSA cooperation, such as with uh, the Republic of Korea, who does have uh, s uh, several satellites. I knew that first question would come, <laughs> uh, and I had it in my text, but um, it was uh, taken out again. So, uh, referring to Chatham House rules and my personal gust, um, yeah, ESA, uh, SSA preparatory program. Uh, Germany supported the uh, first stages of the ESA uh, SSA preparatory program, but uh, uh, after when, when the first uh, um, part of the program came uh, to a conclusion and ESA started to uh, prepare itself to build an independent um, SST capability, um, uh, Germany decided not to support that anymore because we uh, strongly believe that SST, because of the security aspects and the national interest touched is something that needs to be dealt with by um, organizations that have the knowledge and the structure to do so. And we think ESA does not have that. That's why we're not supporting it. Uh, we do support ESA's uh, NEO and space weather continued efforts uh, because that is R&D in its purest form and that's what ESA is great in. Uh, concerning ESA, as I told you, there is uh, very main difference between research and uh, operational system. Uh, France has, uh, and uh, we have, uh, we had big, uh, big meetings with our German colleagues to, to share the same, uh, same approach between uh, France and Germany because France also does not support the SISTI program and support the space weather and new uh, objects. Uh, Why? Well, just because I try to, to to say that in my words, but I'm thinking that either. Uh, try to find a way between the, the technical problems and technical challenges, challenges and, uh, and the requests from the customers, which can be commercial approach or space agencies. So I tried to deal a little bit with military approach, but I would say that there was lacking of some kind of philosophy. Why do, do they really want to, to make uh, an SST uh, uh, program? Mainly when I was discussing with ESA colleagues at Tromisa, that's for space debris, yes, but if you saw, or if you can see very small pieces uh, in, in space, so you will see the bigger objects, and so you will go further into national interest and national concern with your space objects. So you have to, have, uh, you, you have to think first for a strong data policy between all the countries which, which will be involved with your SST program. And they didn't care about that. They want to say, yes, that would be the military problem. No. As he said, 
when you have an asset or a facility, the owner of the asset is responsible of the confidentiality and the classification of all the data. But you have to put first the classification and then declassify. Since the ESA was thinking, no, first thing, uh, nothing is classified, we will classify after. We can't do that. In every country which I know, well, we can trust with them. We always think first classification and then declassification, not the opposite. That's why we were in stronger <laughs> opposition with either. It's fine. <laughs> okay, so uh, regarding the uh, SSA corroboration, regional SSA corroboration, so uh, Japan Space Forum is operating in the Space Debris Observation Facility, such as uh, S-band phased array radar and uh, one meter diameter optical telescope under the contract from the uh, JAXA. And, uh, and it is unique experience that uh, JSF has uh, provided to the JSCOP with uh, tracking data of uh, re-entering uh, Russian Phobos uh, ground satellite. This is a very unique experience for us so far. The uh, Japan should be uh, a member of the SSA, SSN element together with the U.S. And also, I think, uh, and, and also the, uh, we have to contribute to the uh, uh, Asian, East, East Asian countries. They uh, uh, they having uh, uh, many of the satellite, uh, so the, but. Uh, they, they don't have uh, SSA the, uh, capability, uh, uh, so we have to support those, those com uh, countries to uh, uh, avoid, to avoid uh, uh, space debris collision. So, and also, the, uh, I think uh, uh, in Japan, so as you know, the, uh, uh, the Japanese government reached an agreement with the uh, uh, U.S. for the uh, SSA data sharing. So someone said, uh, government people, someone said, uh, there's no need to have any SSA activity in Japan because U.S. provide us with the uh, appropriate uh, data. But uh, I don't think so. The, we have to have uh, uh, appropriate uh, uh, SSA capability in Japan. And, and also, the, we should uh, contribute to provide the space delivery data with uh, uh, com complementary measures, uh, such as a high performance uh, radar and telescope. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so now that I've got you warmed up, I thought I'd ask a hard question. Um, I'm going to put this under the heading of opportunities and challenges. So I got a couple of different questions uh, about uh, Russia and China, some of which uh, were sort of positively framed and some of which were sort of negatively framed. So um, that's why I'm calling it opportunities and challenges. Um, one of the questions I got was, uh, how does Russia, who has a very capable um, SSA network, how does Russia fit into international efforts to cooperate on SSA? Uh, another question I got for Susumu, but which I would open up to all of the panelists, is how has the increase in Chinese capabilities um, influenced your decision about uh, SSA? Um, so I'll stop there and, and turn it over to our panelists. Uh, maybe I had something about, uh, about Russia. Uh, uh, I am part of the IDC meetings uh, with uh, some of you here. Uh, we can have some discussion with uh, Russia, which is a big country for, for space, as you know, but I, I'm not sure they are really started for uh, cooperation or collaboration. In my point of view, if we really want to to have a, a good cooperation and collaboration approach, there shouldn't be any uh, exchanges of money, because once we are dealing about money, it's very difficult, especially between the ODs or and ODs. And uh, my understanding is that Russia is not real, even if all the, the assets are within the military uh, uh, space forces in Russia, they are ready to, to sell their data rather than cooperate and collaboration, I mean, I think, exchanges. 
So there have been exchanges and uh, cooperation on, on specific problems. Uh, for both Grand Trunk Trials, there was a, the Mir station previously in, uh, in 2000 and, and something like that. Is, is that good? And they, I think they are, they are thinking for the good international point of view, but that they are made for me not really uh, ready for space collaboration for, from my understanding. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, still yet, I always, always see the, the Russia ready to sell, to, to, to sell the data in order to, to keep money in, uh, in back, but not uh, saying, uh, they, they say, always saying that they don't need each other to, to have their own assets, so ready to sell, but not ready to cooperate. Maybe you have another experience? Um, I pretty much agree with what you uh, uh, said, Frank. Um, when, uh, during the re-entry campaign of, uh, of Phobos uh, Grund, um, which was an IADC campaign, there was a, a a global exchange of um, SSA um, data, and uh, so when uh, when there is the need to exchange data on an unclassified level, um, that does not seem to be really a problem, um, independent of where that data comes from. Um, when you uh, go into a military or more classified uh, arena, then there is just certain things that can be done and certain things that cannot be done. And uh, you always have to um, ask the question on what's the additional benefit of, of uh, um, gaining an, uh, an additional provider of SSA. Um, and that is a policy question that, you know, um, I don't have the, uh, the uh, insight nor the mandate to uh, um, make calls upon. Well, maybe we can formulate the wish at the uh, event if uh an international cooperation uh, is coming out. Uh, maybe they will join us <laughs> to go to be mainly uh, together rather than be isolated. So uh, for the uh, US and uh, China, we don't have any uh, the connection with the two countries. So uh, as you may know, the, we had uh, a SSA symposium in Tokyo uh, last uh, end of end of February and the first of uh, uh, March, and uh, one year ago the, we had uh, first uh, symposium in Tokyo. So last time I invited the uh, representative from the China, that's a, he, uh, Dr. Li. He is a uh, uh, director of space policy of the uh, Beijing Technology Institute. So he said. Uh, there are some uh, the entities in China to develop, uh, uh, developing the uh, uh, developing the space program, but uh, he said uh, those entities uh, uh, doing uh, separately. So there are no uh, sophisticated co uh, coordination. So he said uh, there are no way to <laughs> to. Who is uh, uh, the major player for the uh, SSA activity in China? So uh, I was very surprised at uh, his opinion. So uh, do you have any uh, kind of the uh, information about the China? Um, well, I will, I will say that at least in the United States, uh, we've worked through their Ministry of Foreign Affairs mm -hmm. to pass um, SSA information, um, which we have done in the recent human spaceflight launches, mm -hmm. but we don't yet have the type of regular exchanges yeah, yeah. that we have with other countries. Yeah. So that is our problem. <laughs> okay, moving on. Um, <laughs> I got some very good questions just now, uh, so hopefully we can get through at least a couple of these. We have about 10 minutes left. Um, this, uh, again, I'm going to combine two questions into one. This question is about cooperating with commercial companies or industry. Um, sort of two questions. One, uh, a very general question about what type of cooperation uh, is currently ongoing within your countries uh, with the commercial operators. All three countries uh, represented here have commercial uh, space capabilities, uh, specifically cooperation with respect to SSA. And then the second question is uh, notes very accurately that it isn't just military 
space capabilities that need SSA uh, information for safe operations, but uh, there are clearly other users, civil users and commercial users. Um, and the question really is, uh, within your country, do you feel that SSA information has to be generated by military systems or could the SSA information be um, acquired, say, by a commercial capability and then purchased by a government uh, organization? Um, okay, thank you for making it so easy by combining those two. Well, you may answer <laughs> only one or the other. It's up to you. <laughs> Well, um, providing services to a, uh, a commercial um, uh, a space company, um, that is something that uh, we have been approached with um, already uh, by a company that uh, operates a constellation of uh, Earth observation satellites commercially. <coughs> and uh, while and it technically would not have been an issue, um, the big question was um, uh, the policy question. So the whole um, the whole question was forwarded to the uh, MOD, um, and uh, I think it is still in uh, in a decision-making process for the last 17 months or so. Uh, so we have not received an answer or guidance yet, and so I can't give you a final answer, um, but. Um, uh, in the end, when it comes to protection of uh, space-based assets, and our national space strategy um, includes military as well as all the national civilian uh, systems. We have, I think, a box score of 45 right now. Um, so the strategy, government strategy already says, yeah, go ahead and do it. But um, again, there's, it's a slow process of uh, adapting uh, within the organization to uh, take on these challenges. Uh, for your second question, in my opinion, that's a definite no-no. Um, we do not see um, a commercial organization to be a major space data provider um, because uh, that would automatically touch national uh, um, interest uh, and the national security uh, um, data which we think should be dealt uh, uh, with by the military. Um, there is no uh, legislation on that in uh, Germany yet. There is a legislation on the uh, distribution of uh, um, Earth observation data from satellites, um, which uh, um, has been published to make sure that no uh, information is disseminated uncontrolled uh, that could actually um, pertain to national security issues. And uh, there are already processes uh, um, underway to uh, come up with a, uh, a legislation that deals with information that is generated um, about SSA with ground-based um, sensors. But uh, as you may be aware, we have a federal election coming up next week so I don't expect any uh, quick outcomes of that uh, um, policy generating procedure or uh, um, lawmaking procedure yet. I'm, I'm always surprised to see how we can we put in the one sentence cooperation and commercial. I mean, cooperation is on a trusting basis and commercial is on a financial basis. So sometimes it seems to me that these words are not going fine together. However, I have no problem with commercial entities or, or so on. Uh, but I'm not sure that any commercial entity or space operators uh, has to deal with space operation because each company or space operator has nothing to deal with space operation. The thing that it wants is the service that can be useful for it, not the, not the space picture because space operator only deals with his own spacecraft, the things that he, he owns it, itself, the others don't care about. And our job is to make a, a real a space picture, a very big space picture at a worldwide level. So that's very different. Uh, however, with uh, the French space agency, I think going to encounter the, the problems of commercial uh, entities and developed uh, what they call CESAR, 
which is a conjunction avoidance uh, service, uh, taking into account mainly the, the U.S. Department of Defense uh, data and some of the of the military uh, uh, other military uh, systems. So this quite answers the, the second question because I know my thinking that SSR has not to be only military. It's not a problem only of military, but as I always say, SSR is not the dual nature between civilian and military. SSR is really a defense and security concern. And I don't, don't want to see defense and security concerns in the end of commercial entities. That's my point of view. But just the fact to say that it's not a problem of military, that's a problem of government. This is, SSR has to be not only minimum. Okay, if the responsibility is given to the military people, that's fine. But it's mainly to be governmental approach rather than a commercial approach. It's really a governmental problem because the commercial entities within our own country has to rely on its governmental and the, the government has to set up the, the real facilities and the, the real uh, services in order to the commercial to make their business at the point. So. <clears throat> okay, so, so regarding the uh, commercial uh, sighted operators, uh, several weeks ago I talked to the uh, people of the uh, Sky Perfect TV in Japan. They are operating the 16 satellite now, and they are very much anxious about that uh, some object originated from the uh, Asian, uh, uh, the satellite operation in Asian uh, Eastern Asian countries. So those objects approaching the uh, uh, Sky Perfect TV is the satellite. So they really want to know the uh, actual status, actual the uh, uh, situation that uh, those uh, company in uh, Eastern, Eastern Asian uh, region uh, doing uh, for for such a, uh, air, such a activity. So. They really want to know the real situation of the uh, uh, commercial uh, operator in Asian uh, countries. So we are uh, organizing the third SSS symposium in uh, next year, uh, end of the February 27 and 28. And uh, we, I, I'm thinking to invite uh, those uh, companies in the uh, Asian uh, Asian commercial uh, satellite operator in, into our uh, symposium, and uh, we will exchange information about on this. So, if you are interested in our symposium in next year, so please come to Japan. Okay, thank you. Um, so we are drawing near the end of our time, and I went to refresh the questions in my list, and they had all disappeared, which I'm going to take as a hint from our conference organizers that it is time to wrap up the panel. So please join me in thanking all of our panelists for what I think has been a very interesting session. Mahalo. Audrey, I want to thank you. You did a fantastic job of synthesizing. I know a lot of questions were coming your way, fast and furious, and you did a fantastic job of synthesizing, I won't say simplifying, but bringing uh, uh, these questions together. And to the panel, I think uh, you guys get the award for getting the toughest questions of the afternoon. Uh, Doug got a bunch of softballs, you know, first thing this morning, but I guess everyone felt pretty heady after lunch. So uh, I, I want to thank you for your participation. and and just uh, your candor and, and honesty on, on how you see things in, from your uh, country's perspective and your agency's perspective. I, I think it was very thought-provoking and, and, as I said, very insightful.